Let me see. Let me test it. Now you are online. Or not? First day, guys. Okay, now I can see. Okay, welcome. Welcome for this first uh, oral presentation. I would like to say thanks for Dr. Amat, Dr. Ayesha, because it's not easy to be the first one. <laughs> uh, uh, the other fellows stay uh, looking for you to see what you happen. And guys, what you happen today? Today, you will start with the synopsis of the mouth, okay, of the mouth. After Dr. Amat, you will start with his oral presentation. Third will be Dr. Ayesha uh, with uh, her presentation. And after you close this, uh, this open room and you go with the fellows to the private room to discuss uh, uh, the doubts, the question about the, the, the clinical case of the mouse, okay? So I you I you start now. I will start now to share my screen here. Okay. I share my screen. He's here. Please tell me, can you can you can you see it? Ayesha, Ramat, can you see my screen? Um, not yet. Not, not yet, sir. Not yet? No. Okay. I believe in a few minutes, a few seconds. Can you see? I don't know. No. Let me try again. Now I think you go. Can you see now? Yes. It's, it's, it's okay. Now. Yeah. Thank you. Let's let's start off the, the first part of this our month, monthly presentation. Uh, today, uh, of course, first thank you uh, to all our fellows that stay with me this year. It's a, a a large year to to knowledge and you larger knowledge together and today about the synopsis of the the, the mouse you discuss applied anatomy of the eye rescue techniques for capsule rex tear out improving your surgical technique and parameters okay about applied anatomy of the eye with the points that i want you to remember this month about the acd okay the ACD is too important because the ELP that you discuss next month, next month you discuss about uh, the IOL power calculation, calculation, and you see that ACD is an important point to, uh, to have a good outcomes in this IOL calculation. So here the IOL, so the ACD and the IOL calculator. Here is the effective lens position. So the effective lens position is the most important point in IOL power calculation. So here my personal take about uh, ACD. ACD between 2.5 and 3.6 and 3.5, it's okay to FACO and to IOL power calculator, okay? So if you have a ACD shallower, shallower than 2.6 millimeter, you need to consider short eyes. And you see in the next month, you discuss about which formulas you need to use in, 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 in short eyes and in, in shallow anterior chamber. ACD greater than, bigger than 3.5 millimeter long eyes. Okay. Here you receive this in the, in the ebook, my protocol for ACD. ACD. Uh, smaller than 2.6 millimeter, I like to preoperatively administering manitol, okay? ACD, bigger than, greater than 3.5 millimeter, fake emulsification with BSS bottle, or if you have, uh, for example, a centurion, you don't need to do it. 
Sérgio, when you perform the small, small parts plan of vitrectomy, when is impossible to insert the instruments and the fecal probe inside the eye, okay? Uh, another important point about anatomy of the eye is just to remember you, you had a, a pod paper about this topic. It's important to capture the optical zone in posterior capsule rupture. You discuss posterior capsule rupture in the, uh, the series five of this Advanced Cataract Course and this fellow. And just remember this, if you have posterior capture rupture, you need to capture the optical zone, as you can see in the left side, and you need to use a three-piece IOL, okay? Here, another point about applied anatomy, you need to observe this patient with uh, pseudo disfoliation. In, in case of pseudo disfoliation, my personal take is you need to use a uh, iris expansion ring and you need to use a capsule tension ring. In the ebook, you have the size of the capsule tension ring. You have 10, 12, uh, 11, 13. It's important to pay attention in the size of the CTR and the Y to Y diameter, okay? So the topic two, to, to resume to synopsis of this month is rescue technique for capsule racks. The most fam famous rescue technique is little maneuver or pull back. You need to pull back the capsule, okay? Here, the example that I, I, I get in the little uh, paper, a, little A, B, and C, and you can see here a video to observe here in this part the wrong movement so kept staying the zone now you can redirect the flap and pull back okay you when you do it you can risk your axis is an important point here is okay. So improving your surgical technique, the topic that I want to discuss today is the best phaco probe position. As you remember, if you watch the, the lecture, if you read the, the ebook, uh, if you move your probe, if you move move your handpiece a lot, what's happened? If you do it, you have more chance to churn, surge, you have more chance to posterior capsule rupture. So it's important to find the right point of your probe. And you, if you, if your settings, if your, your parameters stay good, everything comes to your tip, okay? So here, the best position, you can, it's, it's another important point. Your probe needs to be directly uh, to the, the bag because the BSS go in the bag and avoid and avoid surge, okay? So here, for example, does it stay okay? So the followability stay okay. Everything comes to your probe, to your tip. So it's more safe to avoid posterior capsule rupture. Uh, another tip here, faco chip on the periphery of the nucleus. Please never do it. If you have a posterior capsule rupture. So in parameters, here is my golden rules for advanced parameters. Number one, the same parameters do not always work for all surgeries. Two, do not use another surgeon's parameters. Three, keep the inflow greater than outflow. You need your inflow greater because it avoids your half surgeon, surgery. And of course, posterior capsule rupture. Rule number four, understand the followability. If the piece don't come to your tip, there are problems. Go to the, the, the aspirate flow rate. But your piece came to your tip, but is have a, a chattering, for example. You can improve your vehicle. 
Of course, rule number, rule number five, adjust your fluid parameters intra-op to improve your follow build. How? Here you can see the follow abilities, they need to be okay. The inflow is need to be greater than outflow, okay? Here you can see the points that you have inflow inside your eye and outflow in the eye. Here, for example, observe the follow ability here. Observe okay. okay. The inflow is point your follow-up problem you need to your, your the vehicle happen with your uh, your follow ability guys uh, i'd like if you uh, want to watch it go to canabravacatrack.com uh, you can uh, free receive newsletter every month and uh, now you have a uh, Aisha, first, of course, first Dr. Ramat presentation, okay? And after Dr. Aisha and the fellows, after you go, you go to the private, uh, private room. Ramat, are you okay, bro? Are you, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready, doctor. Uh, may I share my screen? Okay. Uh, who are to watching us here and is not in the fellow in the advanced cataract course? Uh, one of the 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 points that the the fellow needs to to do to receive the certificate is the oral presentation. And today, this month is Dr. Ramat and Dr. Ayesha. When you want. You can start. Is my uh, presentation uh, can be seen? Yes, everything okay. You can start. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, uh, today, I would like to present my oral case, pre uh, oral presentation, oral. Uh, yeah. And uh, first of all, the IOL power prediction formulas are term theoretical because they are based on theoretical optics, which is the basis of uh, the Gulsran I model. And in the 1980s, uh, regression formulas like SRKT formulas one and two were popular because they were simple to use. However, the use of these formulas often led to power errors. In the 1990s, uh, regression formulas were largely replaced by more accurate newer theoretical or ray tracing formulas. Uh, actual length is the most important factor in these formulas since a uh, one millimeter error in actual length measurement results in a refractive error of a approximately 2.35 diopter in a 23.5 millimeter eye. And there's no one size fits all or universal formula for all cases. And as Dr. Canabrava mentioned before that there's a, a ELP or effective lens position. This is uh, used to denote the position of the lens in the eye, specifically the distance that the principal plane of the IOL will sit behind the cornea. And as we know, there are four generation of the uh, IOL calcul calculator, which the one is a uh, the ELP was a constant of four millimeter in every patient uh, and which the second and third generation added a variable to predict the uh, effective lens position. And whereas the, the fourth one uh, in 1995, Olsen and co-workers improved ELP accuracy by adding two more variables, uh, which is pre-operative anterior chamber depth and lens thickness. So uh, there are several formula that uh, I want to discuss. The first one is SRKT, which is a third generation formula using actual length uh, K 
keratometry and a constant and also post-operative refractive target. And a study of a sample size of greater than 300 long eyes showed that the SRKT apparently outperforms Holiday 1 and Hofuki for eyes with actual length longer than 27 millimeter. And there's also Wang Kok adjustment to be apply for in, uh, to enhance the outcome in actual myop. And it can be uh, applied in the uh, manually or automatically in the uh, IOL calculator or biometer machine. The next one is Hill RBF or radial or uh, radial basis function calculator, which is a fourth generation formula. And these are the variables that is used. And a study found that 91% of 467 eyes were within plus minus 0.5 diopter. And Hill RBF calculator is available online and can be accessed. And I tried it myself. Uh, and we can get a uh, uh, wide selection of IOL uh, in here. And the next one is Barrett Universal 2 formula. Uh, this is also a fourth generation formula, which uh, several variables with uh, additional lens factor or uh, a constant that can be used. And this is... Uh, Example for Barrett Universal 2 formula. It can be ac uh, accessed online or uh, for some machine, it can be uh, applied like a uh, Topcon Aladdin. It is uh, available pre, pre installed in the machine. The next one is uh, Kane formula, the theoretical optics, which also incorporates both regression and artific artificial intelligence intelligence component. So can formula is uh, uh, improving uh, database uh, for uh, IOL measurement and a study demonstrated can formula to be superior over Hofer key, Hagis and Holiday and also second most accurate to Barrett to Universal 2 formula with no statistical difference shown. And can formula is also available online it can be accessible to everyone. And the next one is Emetropia Verifying Optical or EVO 2.0 formula. This is uh, a study found that the EVO 2.0 formula is accurate in long eyes between 26 and 28 millimeter. And it is also available online. Uh, the last one uh, that I want to talk about is Wang Kok. Excel length adjustment for holiday formula. As we can, uh, as we all know that cons consistent hyperopic her errors have been reported in long eyes whose actual length were measured by A scan, B scan, or optical biometer. And so there's, uh, we need uh, an adjustment for longer actual length. And a study found that uh, uh, linear and nonlinear uh, regression uh, of axial length can result in different uh, axial length. As we can see here, the longer the axial length, uh, the more it can be uh, be variable or uh, uh, different, uh, uh, both in axial length and the uh, IOL power result. So Wenkov uh, holiday linear adjustment is more aggressive in resulting myopic outcome, whereas the non-linear equation is less aggressive. Therefore, we should target a uh, mild myopic result uh, between minus 0 0.25 diopter. So uh, for the, uh, if we want to ask which one we should, uh, which formula, which formula that we should uh, prefer in long eyes. Uh, a recent study, uh, including 175 eyes divided into long, super long, and extremely long actual length, uh, uh, evaluated uh, for five formula. Between them is Barrett Universal 2, EVO 2.0, Hagis, Kane, and SRKT, resulting that 
uh, EVO 2.0 formula achieved the highest accuracy of 88.9% in the long axial length group uh, between 26 and 28 millimeter, whereas the accuracy of EVO 2.0 and Hagee's formula were stable regard regardless of the axial length. The SRKT formula showed a negative trend in the long and super long axial length group, uh, so it is not uh, recommended. And overall, the EVO 2.0 and Kane formula uh, achieved better results in patients with high axial myopia, whereas the other three formulas showed a slightly poor outcome. So for the summary, uh, achieving a target refractive outcome is an essential and complex aspect of cataract surgery, and there's still no formula for all shapes of, uh, and size of eye. And the formula used depends on the equipment used, like I mentioned before, that uh, some formula might be installed in the uh, our daily practice or daily routine IOL calculation machine. And the last one is if you evaluate our result. So uh, it doesn't matter what formula that you use, uh, you can evaluate your own uh, surgical outcome and apply and maybe you can find your own formula or recipe for the IOL calculation in uh, long eyes. All right, uh, I think that's all, doctor. Thank you. Ini si masih masuk aja kan dokternya. Can you listen to me? Yes, okay. Uh, Ramat, uh, great, great or presentation. Uh, when you send my your your presentation uh, to me before, I I need to 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 modify nothing. For the fellows that stay watch us uh, here, uh, Dr. Hamat uh, discussed the, the new generation of formulas, Barity, Hill, RBF, okay, uh, EV, EVO, EVO, and Kane too. These are amazing formulas uh, to long eyes. And next month, you discuss these topics with more, uh, more, in, with more time. But uh, when Dr. Ramat select this this topic for uh, his presentation, for me it was a, was a, was amazing because it works like a, a, a open session for the next month, right, Ramat? And uh, he 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 discussed the the formulas. So today it's impossible to discuss uh, IOL power calculation. We will doubt to discuss. Uh, Kane formula, you doubt to discuss Hill RBF, you doubt to discuss Bart. Bart, of course, Bart is Bart Universal 2 is, is, is so traditional and with uh, good outcomes. Uh, another, another point that I would like to, to, to discuss in this oral presentation is about the one cock uh, adjustment. So you need to pay attention. It's only for holiday and just to SERKT. So for example, Barity, so for example, uh, the EVOs, uh, so the, the Hill RB, RBF, the, the formula do this adjustment for you, okay? Ramat, another point you want to discuss because I really liked your presentation. Ramat, can you listen? Yes, doctor, pardon. Any, any question you want to discuss? Before I, I invite Aisha for for start her presentation, I think uh, the I can ask it for for now. It is uh, enough. Congratulations, my friend! Your your first first uh, you were the first. It was really really hard, and now that other fellows can see how it works. Thanks, Amat. I, I see you again in the private room. Uh, in few minutes after Dr. Ayesha presentation. All right. Thank you, Doctor. Ayesha, how are you, girl? <laughs> hello, hello, Doctor Sergio. 
Nice uh, meeting like you all. Thank you. I would like to say something. Uh, this morning I asked Aisha, uh, do you want to go first? No, no, no. Uh, Ramat, <laughs> go first. Yes, okay, of course. <laughs> the lakes have the, the control here. Aisha, when Thank you're ready. You. When you're I ready, am. Please. I am ready. Can I share my screen now? Not now. Just a minute. Uh, so, Dr. Ayesha, you discuss an uh, amazing topic too, is keratoconus in cataract surgery. Uh, next month, uh, you have uh, uh, a e-book and a, a talk about uh, keratoconus, IOL calculation keratoconus. When you're ready, you can share it, Ayesha. Am I sharing it now? I am, actually, no. but can you see it? Yes, now it's okay. Now you, you, you're ready. Perfect. Um, perfect. So good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Ayesha Vega from, from an of the, a general ophthalmologist from Peru. And today I'm going to talk about IOL calculation in patients with cataract and keratoconus. So I am, I'd like to, I, I uh, told Dr. Sergio I like to talk about this topic because keratoconus is a very prevalent disease, especially here in my country, in Peru, and the south of my country where I actually live. So we need to remember that keratoconus is a bilateral ectasia due to non-inflammatory thinning of the cornea, right? And about one in every 2,000 people are estimated to develop keratoconus with its onset uh, especially in early adolescence, and its progression up to 30 or the 40 years. Um, after that age, actually, uh, it gener generally stabilizes. So um, there is a higher incidence of cataract in patients with keratoconus, especially at young age. And that's really an issue because planning the surgical uh, technique and also the pre-operative pre um, IOL calculations are kind of difficult here. So we need to remember we have actually four stages of keratoconus, but statistically speaking, especially for studies, we have three stages. The mild keratoconus stage, that is um, keratometry where less than 48 diopters. The moderate stage that includes uh, keratometries between 48 and 55 diopters. And the severe stage that includes um, more than 55 diopters. So uh, the surgical planning of cataracts as I said, in, in patients with keratoconus brings into perspective several unique considerations, such as, for example, determination of the progression of the disease, the preoperative planning, um, especially making the biometry and choosing the IOL. Uh, after that, the intraoperative surgical challenges are important too, especially because of poor visibility of the, the cornea, because of its irregularity, and also the postoperative results, which are very common, the refractive surprises and the visual outcomes. So starting speaking of the progression of keratoconus, we need to know that there are two procedures that we can make uh, before planning cataract surgery. Uh, first of all, Collagen cross-linking that is very known to stabilize or to stop the, the progression of the disease. So it is being, many studies have recommended a two-stage procedure, starting with cross-linking and six months after the cross-linking, doing the phaco surgery or the cataract surgery. That it's a very safe and effective procedure, especially when we have um, patients with keratoconus that probably are still progressing. So the other, um, the other procedure we have is the implantation of intrastromal cornea ring segments that uh, many studies also seen that uh, implantation of intracorneal segments uh, in patients with keratoconus, especially with um, uh, for severe forms of keratoconus are um, a great procedure because it reduces uh, significantly the um, 
the keratometry is equivalent, spherical equivalent, and also high order aberrations. They also reduce refractive surprises and improves corneal shape, uh, in, gives more precise central corneal power and effective lens position. And they also give better corrected distance visual acuity. And they are especially recommended in keratoconus of stages three and four. So what, what are or which are the preoperative challenges? We have calculating keratometry, we have uh, calculating the intraocular power and choosing the lens, and we have calculating or estimating the affected lens position. So we need to know or we need to remember that simulated keratometry, that is the value we use, um, generally is derived by taking the radius of, a of the anterior corneal curvature and a standard keratometry index. But the SYNC assumes a fixed radio between the anterior and posterior corneal curvature, which in keratoconus patients, is, this radio is especially altered. So it is demonstrated in many studies that the pentacam chain fluke pachymeter had better repeatability and than, the other, than the other devices, especially devices with, for example, the audio masters. And it works so much better, especially in keratoconus um with stages mild and moderate stages and well it is recommended too that um, keratometric readings should be taken in the central cornea the other thing is remember that optical biometry overestimates corneal power because of the actual axial length of patients with keratoconus that is higher and also underestimates IL power giving a result uh, of a post-operative hypermetropy. That is something we need to, to um, remember too. And um, these larger measures of keratometries gives us results with greater chances of post-operative hypermetro hypermetropic uh, biometry errors. And also the effective lens positions depends on the formula we use. Uh, it is recommended to use the SRA SRK2 formula, especially for mild and moderate keratoconus, but also we have cane formulas. The keratoconus formulas, especially we have two formulas, the cane keratoconus formula, which uh, Dr. Ramat previously talked about, and also the holiday two with keratoconus adjustment formula. These formulas um, have been created to avoid hyperopic refractive results. And also uh, there are some recommendations, for example, in keratoconus stage one, there is no need to make non-adjustment. Uh, for stage two, uh, the, the target should be a myopic target from 0 to 75 to 1.5 negative and for keratoconus stage three it is recommended to um, look for a myopic target from two or three diopters negative another thing to consider is to choice the lens should be should we use a toric or not toric lens so we need to remember that there is an increased chance of post-operative rotation in these patients because of the actual lens that is higher, that is longer, and also the capsular back size. So the majority of the studies only showed effectiveness for patients with stable and mild um, to moderate keratoconus. So we need to, to remember that toric lenses especially are especially recommended for this type of patients, the mild and moderate keratoconus, not for severe forms and not for patients who are gonna possibly need a future keratoplasty or return to a rigid gas permeable or a scleric contact lens after the surgery, because results are gonna be so much different. And also to avoid a rotation of the IOL, it is recommended to use the CDR, the capsular tension grade segment. This is an algorithm for uh, selecting the, the IOL in patients with keratoconus. And the last things we need to, to know is that there are also 
or other challenges, especially in the interoperative. For example, we have, uh, because of the coordinator regularity, we have to, or we need to know that Viscoelastic is going to work so much better than B BSS um, because of the image distortion and the distortion of the working reflex, like in these images, you can see the distortion of the the aspiration and the irrigation cannulas, and also uh, of the um, of the fake And for this uh, for these issues, it is recommended to use viscoelastic. And also, some studies have shown that there are better, better results with rigid gas permeable contact lenses. Um, that works uh, a lot much much better for for the surgeon. Uh, and also to remember the wound creation, uh, it is still in discussing uh, the use of suturing uh, to to make the anterior chamber more stable. And also, um, as I mentioned before, using the capsular capsular tension ring for prevent um, the IO rotation. And um, to, to end this, this presentation, the post-operative results, uh, as we mentioned before, uh, are very common, the refractive surprises. So um, there are two uh, ways to, to manage this type of, of results. The non-surgical options for these patients when we have this refractive surprise, and we have the surgical options. With the non-surgical options, we have the spectacle correction and also the contact lenses. We can use soft contact lenses for uh, residual refractive errors that are very low or for my um, irregular astigmatism. And we can use the rigid gas permeable lenses or scleral lenses for high refractive errors, residual refractive errors. And we also have the surgical options. Um, these options are described as the IOL exchange that are recommended from weeks from week four to six after a surgery, not af nor after that because of the fibrosis of the capsule, and also um, using a secondary IOL, for example, the anterior chamber fake IOLs like the iris cloud lenses, and also the piggyback lenses that are the ICLs lenses. So the key points are, remember, the stability, the severity, and the location of the cone, the, the keratoconus, can also create a great impact in the preoperative biometry and also the formulas we are going to use. We need to remember there are some procedures that can make um, our, our IOL calculation like mm, mm, more trustable, more uh, better. In, so the cross-linking and the implantation of the interstromal corner ring segments prior to cataract surgery are recommended. And also, um, uh, we need to remember that toric lenses are not recommended from, for everybody, just for mild to moderate forms of keratoconus. And remember that these patients should be aware of this type of results. That should be all. Thank you very much. Ayesha, congratulations. I, I really, I really surprised your presentation. Better than a lot of talks that I, I, I watch in ASIS and ESIS. You really know about everything about keratoconus. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Are you, are I you hope supposed... you liked it. No, you really like it. I, I really like it. I, I'm sure that everything that they watch us in the YouTube and our fellows uh, that watch you love your, your lecture because you discuss everything is important on keratoconus patients. Uh, you talk about some points that you discuss here that is, that is, is important to, to remember for the for who uh, don't know nothing about keratoconus and cataract surgery. Uh, the number one, the stability of the conus, as you told you, is, is important. Number two, the post-operative hyperometry, uh, hyperopic is important to pay attention. Uh, the overestimated cornea power is important to pay attention to this. And you put the, the, the stage of the keratoconus too, about uh, stage two that you uh, target is 
minus 0.75 to 1.5, 1.5, and the stage three minus two, uh, two, uh, it's important points two. So is it, congratulations, your presentation is, is complete, is approved, and if you want to say in, in words and after, fellows, please, uh, are you send in, in, the, in our group the, the private link to our uh, meeting to discuss the, the, the question of the months about the case, the clinical case. So don't go, don't go by, okay? Ayesha, and, and top, do you want to, to discuss? Uh, want to, do you want to say something? No, I want you to, I wanted you to ask the, which formula do you use for these patients? I, I which, love which to one compare, you prefer? I, I, love, I love to compare two formula. Barity with cane uh, keratoconus is the way that I, I, I would like to do. And of course, uh, you see next month the advance I will, I will calculate a, a, a series. I like to use the EQR to the pentacan and the and the APP to the, the OPD scan to 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 compare the the axis the axis the visual axis to the visual center of the pup, the pupil because sometimes when the 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 axis of the cornea is not the uh, the axis of the the center of the pupil so exactly you you, you discuss this point next month. It's a uh, spoiler. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. Okay, guys. Thank you. We will finish for today. Every end of month, uh, you can find us. It will be free through the oral presentation. Uh, next month, you next month you have more two fellows with us with us, and see you next month. And fellows, see you now in the our private group. Okay.